Moving on, we have the event based. So this is triggering a report to run. So when I select this, I'm going to go ahead and set here a schedule name. Again, description, keywords are optional. Now here, this is a little different. I now need to set a condition. So what do I mean by condition? When does this report need to kick off and run? Uh, we have a few different options, so either monitoring for a new record um, or modified record in a database, monitoring for a new file or modified file. Uh, we can even monitor for unread uh, mail in a mailbox. Typically, the, the database options are the most popular, and I like to use the database record has been modified because it does include uh, give you the ability to include when new records are added as well. So in my example, I'm going to say uh, new orders. When any new orders come in and set this to true, I need to select now the database of uh, that I want monitored. I do not have a username and password set up, so I should be able to continue. So now I'm going to go ahead and build my query. If you are very SQL handy, uh, you can go under the Advanced tab, write it, or copy and paste it if you wrote it in SQL Server. So I've got my orders table, and if I go ahead and decide to parse this, let me see what is currently available. In my database, I have 830 records with information already. I'm going to hit OK. Now I noticed there was something in there that I didn't really like. So I'm going to go under my customers and hit a parse here. And I have a bit more information here that I could use. So I am going to actually monitor for my customers table for any new customers that are added into my database. And I could get a little bit more nitty gritty if I want to specify, you know, where the company name starts with uh, or, you know, a specific customer ID or region. In my case, I just want to have an idea of all new customers coming in. So I'm going to go ahead and hit um, OK here. And I do need to select my primary key, which in my case is Cust ID. This is where you can detect for inserted or deleted records, as well as um, having the ability to match the condition if the record has or has not been modified within so many minutes that you can specify here. I can leave this one and I'll move on. So I've set up my condition. Now I can add another condition as well. And if I do add, so if I do for file exists, for whatever reason, just so you can see these options here, um, I want a local file and if, if this file as well. So let me say file exists or, yep. And you'll notice run once for all files found or run once, uh, run for each file that is found. In my case, I'm just gonna do the one. So I have these two different conditions I now need to determine, does it need to fulfill any or all of the conditions, um, which will make a big difference, especially if, in my case, they are completely separate conditions. I'm monitoring for a file, and then I'm monitoring for, uh, you know, um, a new record in my database for new customers. I never did change the name, but that, in, in this case, it would be new customers. Um, but if I needed both of these to be met before I wanted a, a report ran or an email notification sent, um, I would need to select that here. I'm going to delete the file one for this purpose. And if I move on, this is where I need uh, to determine what happens next. So once my condition has been met, do I want to uh, run a report or do I just possibly want to send an email notification? Selecting new report will simply walk you through creating a, a new schedule. If you already have a scheduled report that you've created and you just want to 
rerun that, I can do so. Um, so when I select existing schedules, what that will do is bring up the, uh, because I have many reports listed here, it will take just a second, but it will bring up all of the reports. Hitting next is where I can select what report I need to run or I would like to run. So in my case, I can run something that is not colored and is disabled because I only need it to run based on this condition. You've then got your exception handling and it is a little bit different with event-based schedules because you can set a priority uh, level um, as well as use custom hours of operation specifically for event-based. Lastly, you've got your list of custom tasks. Again, um, should you have any SQL scripts, stored procedures, batch files, um, or anything that you may want to upload to an FTP site at this point, you can do so here. I'm going to go ahead and hit next, and it'll just give you a list of the execution, uh, execution flow, and I can hit finish. So with this, you'll notice there was no ability to set a scheduled time, and that is, again, because this is going to monitor for, a, a, uh, in my case, a database record, whether it's modified or inserted or deleted before running the report. So every 30 seconds, based on my options that I have in my scheduler, if it is on, every 30 seconds, it's going to check for that condition to make sure it's met. Once it's met, it will go and kick off my report. This is where the pre-check database condition using up to five connections would, would be useful. You can pre-check the database condition to see if it meets uh, the condition or not and set how, how many connections um, at a time should it pre-check. So moving on to the next schedule type is an event-based package. Now, you're kind of wondering, you've got your single schedule and then you have a package. We just did event-based and now I have a package. So you'll see data-driven and then you'll have a package. So very similar to a package type, all it is is multiple event-based schedules in a package. So I'm gonna go ahead and again, edit this one for time purposes. Um, the only difference, what you'll see here with the event-based package is I have the ability to schedule out my event-based schedule. So if, for example, you have your new customers and you want that report to run but only once a day, I could disable the event-based schedule and simply add it here there is no limitation as far or minimum as far as the number of schedules if you want to use a package. So in my case, I only have one event-based schedule in here. That is okay. That's all I need. So I can schedule that and that's how you can work around if you want, if you like the event-based but you still want to be able to schedule it, you can do so by putting it into a package. Outside of that, you have your Again, custom tasks, and then you see your execution flow, and then um, because this is a, a, a pre-created schedule, um, history. So again, that's the only difference with the event-based package is you have the ability to add in multiple schedules um, here, event-based schedules specifically, and you have the ability to um, schedule this out versus having it pull every so many seconds. All right, so moving on to data-driven. What is a data-driven schedule? I like to use um, two examples here with the data-driven or why you would use a data-driven, uh, and it could be for sales reports. So if you have you know, 10, 15, 20 salespeople and you want to be able to send them a weekly report of their sales that is specific to them, you don't want to have to create 10, 15, 20 different sales report, uh, one for each employee. Instead, it's a one sales report and you are parameterizing or dynamically running the same report but with a list of different 
filters or parameters, which would in this example be a list of all the sales employees. Um, so bank statements or invoices are very similar. Um, you're just going to have it reel through and run for all the customers um, or employees that you have that you're going to send this out to. So I'm going to go ahead and select, in this case, an um, example again, we will cover the SSRS. I'm going to select for Power BI. First thing I, you do need to um, set up here, configure, is the connection to where that data lives. So this means um, in my sales example for the sales report, I need to select where all those salespeople are located, um, where, where is their information, their names, their email addresses, uh, and any other information that you would like to be able to dynamically use. I'm going to select here um, a SQLRity samples. I'm going to connect. And then again, here I've got a list of employees. Now, if I go ahead and parse this to see what's listed, I've got some information here. Now, it doesn't look like I have an email column available. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. I have an example of a list of what I call industries. I need to see um, a profitability report based on the list of industries that I have. Let me parse this to see what is available. So here I have a list of industries with some contact information. That's perfect. That's exactly what I need. I'm going to hit OK. Now I do need to select the key column. And what you'll notice here, we have group reports together by email address. And of course, this is for the email destination only. But what that will do is if you have any contact that would be receiving multiple reports, it will group them together and only send one email with the attachments. So what exactly do you mean by that? If I look at my current uh, data set here, I've got information. Let's say John Klein is responsible for the CPG industry as well as the energy. Instead of getting two separate emails, he would get one email with two reports, one for CPG and one for energy. Now, if you prefer to leave them all on their own, um, so let John Klein get two different emails, just uncheck the option. Moving on, this is going to be very similar lookup. I need to select um, my report here. And in my case, here is the report that I would like to use. I need to go ahead and set my schedule. And then I've got my report settings. And in this case, I only need page three. Now, this is where your filters have to come into play because this is where it's going to dynamically run through, in this example, the list of industries based on my data driver. So here, I'm going to pull it back up again. Just for reference, I have 13 different industries right here. I need this report to run for all of these industries. Now, I may have 50 total industries um, in my database, but based on my query selection and uh, what I've selected, if I did here, for example, industry starting, you know, with specific criteria, um, that is that is what would pull. So again, this 13 industries is what I need to run this report for. So when I go to my report filter, it is a basic filter that I'm using. I first need to um, enter in the table and column of where that, uh, I, would, I would say, industry is located. Or in my case, in my table, which is called industries, I have a column called industry, and that is where the list of the industries are located. You do need to select what field uh, data type, which can be found in your Power BI report. It is a string in my example. So now 
instead of having to enter in all 13 different industries that I want to run this report for, I have my data-driven data constant, or I call insert. And what you'll notice is, based on my data driver, all of those columns from the industry table are listed here for me to use. This is the one that I need. I will click and drag it over. So what this will do now is re reel through each of these records one by one, CPG, energy, financial materials. It will run this report for me. Um, so I will end up with 13 different reports with this example. I'm going to hit next. In my case, I don't need to refresh any data set, so I can skip over this. Now I do need to add in an email destination because I would like to have these emailed to each of um, the contacts. Now, how do I get that to automatically send through to each one without setting up 13 different destinations? Excuse me. I will just click and drag over the email uh, column here. So the correlating email address that corresponds to the industry um, record would be set up. I can now use these anywhere else in my formatting. You can use these as well in any destination, um, and I will show you that in just a moment. So I've got industry profitability report. And I can as well use these inserts to build out an email template to make it a little bit more customizable. So at this point, you can get the gist of, you know, being able to use these inserts within the body of the email, the subject, um, as well as, of course, um, data driving or dynamically using the email address. My format here, I can um, use, in this case, I will use an XLSX file. And again, with the data only options, so the PDF data only, you'll notice it is a little different. What it did was go out to my Power BI report, and it took a look at all of the visualizations on the report so that I can now go in and select what information that I want to bring the summary or underlying data back to. So depending on what page you're looking at, um, um, and this is page number of your report, so mine did have multiple pages, I can select, I want the summary data of this, but I also want to grab on, you know, this page of the report, the uh, underlying data, and what this will do is in an Excel spreadsheet, you'll have one sheet, and then you'll have a second sheet, and the name of each sheet will be the name of the visual title. So again, any visualizations on your report, as long as it has a title, um, you can go in here and grab the summary or underlying data. You do have some format options, you know, leaving the worksheet name blank. Um, again, by default, it will bring back the, um, it will name the uh, worksheets the name of the visual title. Um, and then you can password protect the workbook as well. Under naming, this is going to be very important. I can't have all of the report names end up as CES um, P3. I do want to customize it. That will ensure that when it reels through each record, if it stays at CPS3 for record one, when record two gets outputted, it may overwrite the original one. And at the very end of the 13th record running, you'll end up with one copy and it'll be for that last record uh, as far as the data inside of it. So you do definitely want to customize the output file name. I definitely like to use the, the main, uh, in my case, industry. So it'll list out CPG, I believe was the first one. Um, and then again, whatever this report may be, you can also include, again, the, the date time frame. I do like to have the dashes in mind to separate those and hit OK. I'm going to go ahead and show you a disk destination with this as well. Um, and I can go under Demo Reports and PBRS here. So I've got my report path, but what happens if my report path isn't there? 
and you want to be able to create these on the fly. I can do so by uh, clicking and dragging over and creating my report path. So in this example here, it would create a folder called CPG, another folder called NRG, and so forth for each of my industries. And then within each of those folders, the copy of that related report would be in, in that uh, specified folder. Again, you do have the options here. This time I want to do basic PDF here. I can just drag that over and that'll be fine for me. Next, you've got your exception handling and then you've got your list of custom tasks. Now, what I'd like to show about these custom tasks is you do have the ability because it is going to run multiple times. Do you need this custom task to run for each report that is generated or just once for the entire schedule. So I've just gone and run this industry report. I need to go and update a record in the database and I need to set a flag for whatever reason. Um, you can do so, again, you're clicking and dragging this over. Um, because I'm updating a database record here, I need to specify what I'm trying to update. And so here, table containing the records to update. Let's say I want to update the industry, update possibly the, the email, or maybe you want to add or set something. I can do so. Um, in my case, there's nothing that I really want to set, but just showing you the example of how, how easy it is to update something, uh, monitor, modify something using these database custom tasks set its value to, I can set whatever it needs to be if it makes sense to. I can even use the data driver information as well before setting it down, moving on, and I can, again, only update records where. So it's building out your query for the most part is really what this does for you. I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel here because I don't have anything I actually want to set up. And I'm going to hit finish. Now again, it's going to go and grab a copy and save it all before closing out. So you'll notice here I've now got a data-driven schedule. I'm going to go ahead and go into the data-driven package. I don't have one already pre-created in this case. Uh, package name. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit next. You've got your scheduling options, and then you'll notice here again, you're grabbing in your data, uh, data set that you want to dynamically run. I'm going to go ahead and just go through this process here to get to this bottom piece. So group reports together by email address. So previously in a regular schedule, we had the one option, which was group reports together by email address, email only. But you'll notice here we have the ability to now merge um, disk destinations as well as um, merging the group into a single PDF file or an ex, um, a single Excel workbook. Because again, with a package, you are going to be running multiple data-driven schedules. So if you have so, you know, multiple sales people, and I like to use the example sales because it's easy to understand, but if, if I'm sending out regional reports and I'm responsible for two different regions, I'm going to get two emails by default, but in this case, what it's saying is I can actually merge them and put them either in one directory or email the one email. So I'm going to go ahead and hit next here. What you'll notice is you're now selecting your destination. Um, what I can do, we've seen the Slack, the email, the, the Dropbox, uh, Google Sheets, very similar. Um, I'm just going to select um, a test account here, and I'm going to hit OK. You'll notice that did go for Google Sheets, so it's going to save it Google Sheets to that account. 
I'm going to hit next. And then this is where it's very similar to the other packages. This is where you're adding in multiple packages. Now, in my case, um, let me go here. I can go through this process and add, but this is the last piece of the um, scheduling that is different with the package schedule. Merge all Excel outputs into a single workbook merge all PDF outputs into a single PDF file. So you have the additional abilities there. If I attempt to click next, what you'll notice is I cannot, and that is because I don't have any reports added in here. After the reports, you have your exception handling, your additional custom tasks, and then um, you're finished creating the schedule. So again, packages are just simply multiple data-driven schedules packaged into one with additional capabilities of grouping and merging the PDF and Excel files. Lastly, we have an automation schedule. What is an automation schedule? I, I love these because they have nothing to do with reports typically, um, or at least that I've seen used that way, uh, but I'm scheduling out custom tasks. So let's say you're in the IT department and you know you have a list of SQL scripts or um, SSIS packages that you need to run on a daily basis. Set it up here and use it and let it automate it through. Um, you can you know see all of your scheduling directly from one application using this. Um, again, shell scripts, batch files, you can um, use the run program or open document. Again, you'll notice here you're selecting your um, executable or program. You do have the ability to set parameters around that as well as running under a specific domain account. Going through this, you know, sending um, a text message. What is the wait and pause? All that is is a task that will just sit there and pause the scheduler for so many seconds. So let's say you're running a SQL script. That SQL script, you know, will take five minutes to run. So in this case, I can do this here, and I'll just name this. Let me do a connect, and I'm going to select a SQL script. I believe I may have one. Let's see here under my documents. Yep, I've got an insert here, and I'm going to hit OK. So I have this SQL script. I know it's going to take about, you know, three minutes to run. So if I do 180 here, wait three, and I did that in all caps, I apologize. So now it's gonna run the SQL script, and then it's gonna immediately wait three minutes. Then I want it, let's say I want it to execute a schedule. I can do that. Now again, it will take a second, I've got, uh, you know, many, many different reports um, and configuration settings um, in here uh, for this purposes. But I can go ahead and select uh, whatever report that I need to run, and I do need to name it um, OE. Hit OK. And then it will kick off. So this is just like a little holder to give it a few seconds or minutes before the next task begins to pick up and run. Again, you've got your files and folder options, so copying files, renaming or moving files. All you're doing is selecting the file name, you're browsing to it, selecting the new file, determining if you want to overwrite it. Um, zipping files, all of these many different custom tasks and options that you have available to you. And I can go ahead and for these purposes, I don't want these to run, I'm going to hit finish. And now I've got my automation schedule. Christian Stevens Software. Bigger data, better business.